what are the cost drivers? In the public health care system, they are clearly identifiable. There's no argument. What is driving health costs in public is the compensation for employees, the pharmaceuticals, which you are dealing with, you are aware that we have been able to reduce in November last year the prices of ARVs by 53%. And two months ago, we reduced the prices of TB drugs and all antibiotics by 18%. When we were doing that, we were told that the economy is going to collapse. I'm still waiting for it to do so. Because I thought it was very unfair for a country to have a high load of disease and still pay more than all the other countries for ARVs. When we, there's supposed to be economies of scale, but it was not there. We've achieved it. The other is laboratory services, blood and blood products, and health technology. We are busy dealing with this. We're already making serious inroads. We've already won here. We are fighting with all the others, and we believe we'll win. In the private healthcare sector, the cost is the exorbitant cost of, I mean, pricing in the healthcare system. And uh, the ruling of the Competition Commission in 2000, no, it's rather 2004, we think it has led to destruction of the healthcare system. That's why I'm not hiding it. I'm speaking to the Competition Commission that the fact that they allowed a situation where there's no price control, is free for all, has put us in this. A, a, a situation where we have to fight against each other, but because that's my job, I won't be able to keep quiet about it. For that reason, we believe both public and private health care sectors, regardless of the good quality and resources in the private sector, we believe the health care system is at best destructive, it's unsustainable, it's very expensive and curative, and we need to change from that. Now, in, in 2008, the, the World Health Organization released their World Health Care Report. And they said there are three trends around the world that undermines improvement of health outcomes globally. We have to have certain outcomes, as I showed you from that map. And they are saying there are three trends that are undermining that. The first one is hospital centrism. They believe that every health care problem has to be solved inside the hospital. That's what most South Africans believe. If you read papers when they attack the quality of healthcare in the healthcare system. They believe health means hospital. In fact, if you listen to it carefully, I'm actually not a minister of health, I'm a minister of hospitals, <laughs> according to a general belief. And that should not be, it's because of hospice centrism. Believe that, no, we don't do anything, we just put, make it well in the hospital and everything will fall in place. It can't be, it can't. It has never happened like that in any country. The other is fragmentation. South Africa knows a lot about fragmentation. Before 1994, we had two healthcare systems divided along color lines. The Constitution came and abolished that completely. We wake up 17 years later, we wake up with two healthcare systems, no longer based on color, now based on socioeconomic status. And the divisions are not written anywhere, not in any constitution, but are more brutal.